Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! There is perhaps a certain irony that even when economists are attempting to take the blame, they end up using poor old weather forecaster Michael Fish as their whipping boy and headline synonym for a forecast gone wrong. The Bank of England admitted that economists were facing a forecasting crisis after their dire predictions of a post-Brexit downturn proved unfounded, at least in the first six months. The Bank of England's chief economist, Andy Haldane, said his team were now facing having to predict how the economy would perform despite unknowable outcomes of the Brexit negotiations. So can economists tell us anything more than Paul the Octopus or Mr Whippy the Whippet or indeed Meg the Mystic? Here's Chris Cook. Good afternoon to you. Earlier on today, apparently, a woman rang the BBC and said she heard that there was a hurricane on the way. Well, if you're watching, don't worry, there isn't. Has economics had its own Michael Fish moment? That's what the chief economist at the Bank of England said this week. Very similar to the sort of uh, report central banks, uh, naming no names, issued yeah. pre-crisis, yeah. you know, hurricane, there's no hurricane coming. It might be very windy, you know, in, in the subprime sector. The financial crisis was a huge shock to economists. In 2009, 49 countries had year-on-year -year falls in economic activity. But as late as September 2008, no major forecasters foresaw those recessions. We fail to appreciate the damage that actually a relatively small subprime mortgage market in the States, that's loans to fairly poor people who can't really afford the houses they're trying to buy, would do to our financial sector. In because we didn't realise how, just how interdependent the whole financial sector had become. There were views that uh, the financial sector was able to manage risk much more effectively with all this sort of computerisation and self-reporting, and, and that turned out to be uh, not to be true. The financial crisis wasn't the only bad weather that The Economist missed, though. Ever since then, the British economy has consistently underperformed what the economic consensus has suggested. And of course, there's a storm that they predicted that never came. The Brexit referendum didn't lead to an immediate contraction. Now, those two misses weren't the result of complex maths mistakes, but relatively simple judgment calls that went wrong on how the economy would respond to two historically unprecedented events. Economists have struggled with forecasting recently because um, the economy is very weak after a very unusual event, the financial crisis. So we haven't got many, many of those uh, to go by. Most economists are still glum about Brexit, but lots, at the least, got the timing of any trouble wrong. All the evidence suggests that withdrawing, or the, suggests that withdrawing from the European Union will be bad for long-term growth in the UK. What went wrong, perhaps, was suggesting that those effects would be brought forward and lead to more savings and less demand in the economy in the very short run. It's worth remembering that as bad as things have been in spotting crises coming, economic policies got a lot better at responding to those crises. We may not have very good forecasts yet, but we have much better umbrellas. You can see that most clearly in what happened after the financial crisis. The lessons that had been taken from the Great Depression were put into action with all policy levers in many countries around the world being put to the purpose of preventing another Great Depression from taking place. That's how economics can contribute. We learn from our mistakes in the past, we learn from economic history, and we make the best use of the evidence available. Most of the strong winds, incidentally, will be down over Spain and uh, across into France as well. Since the financial crisis, economics has been a victim of the unprecedented financial and political climate. Chris Cook there. Well, joining us now is The Guardian columnist Simon Jenkins and Vicky Price from the Centre for Economics and Business Research. It's lovely to have you both here. I'm going to leave the rain, or should I say the umbrella aside, for one <laughs> moment and just look at the rain. Is it useless trying to 
predict what's going to happen if they can't see a financial crash which turns into the worst one for 80 years and then they go on to make further mistakes five years later what's the point well i think the first thing to say is that it's not true that nobody was uh, forecasting at the time that things were likely to turn really nasty so the fact that it wasn't put if you like you know very strongly through the media and people weren't necessarily listened to is something we mustn't forget that wait, there were a wait, number wait, of people wait, so who were quite worried we didn't see no no it. no, no, no the people were not particularly uh, voicing particularly strongly there were loads of indicators that were worrying economists at the time but the overwhelming view nevertheless was that we could probably carry on because we had settled the macro i think we've had a number of people saying we've sorted that out we have no longer any booms and busts uh, particularly gordon brown was saying that at the time and we are really you know quite safe from anything that happens i think what people forgot was just as we've just been hearing the interconnectivity across various countries particularly on the financial sector and globalization has been a very important part in that it has made it quite difficult actually for an individual country to just isolate itself and be able to forecast exactly what's going to happen Sorry, in it. Well, I mean, I thought the whole point of economics was you could predict these things. I mean, otherwise, don't make predictions. Um, uh, we assume that when you could make a prediction... Is, is that for you what the study of economics is? <laughs> predictions? No, it's not. It's about studying human behaviour. I mean, economics, to me, we, we went all wrong when it went up the backside of mathematics. And they did these models. These models are, are, are clearly fallacious. I mean, they got two huge things wrong, the crash and now Brexit. I'm going to say they. I mean, people who are employed by the government to get these things right. Um, and they don't, they don't pretend, they say, we think this is going to happen. They may say it might happen, it would happen, possibly might happen. But the fact is they are making predictions. And in the case of Brexit, they were, they were massively on one side and wrong. Uh, and, and what I find suspicious about it is they were the people who were hired by the government. I mean, the suspicion is that this is not an independent profession, which I'd like to think it was. But these are hired guns who do, who do really, they say what government wants them to hear. I mean, they're, they're different things, aren't they? We should say on Brexit... So far, they have proved wrong. We're in early stages, I think, you know, a lot of well, people... you can always say that. I mean, it's, it's, like, it's like someone saying there'll, there'll be a war one day. Uh, you want to know when. And the point about expertise is, that, is they should tell you when. And all I'm saying is I think they should really have an inquiry into these things. If this was a, 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 a professional mistake in engineering or medicine, there'd be a public inquiry. The do economists get away... The economists just say, oh, it's a Michael Fish moment. Enough. We sort of... Well, I think we do. Look what's going on right now. I think they're being attacked all the time. The experts are being sort of ridiculed, if you like, by some members of, 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 of even the parliament, uh, as you know. And yet, if you just uh, uh, heard what Simon Jenkins was just saying, that this was all coming from uh, people who work for the government and therefore they are not independent. It's been the overwhelming majority of economists, independent economists, working for banks, working for think tanks, who have nothing to do with politics, who are all believing that, in fact, uh, leaving the EU would be bad news for the UK. Not necessarily all agreeing that the short-term impact would be really bad, but that the, the medium and long-term impact would be uh, resulting in lower growth in the UK economy. But they said, they said something quite specific. They said there'd be an immediate um, crash of they some did, sort. They said... uh, and, and they're not pretending they didn't. What they're trying to say, it was just a weather forecast that went wrong. Okay, these, well, things, these things really do matter. Well, it's, what do not, it's not true that it was the weather forecast that went wrong. Uh, the assumption had generally been that mm. there would be triggering of Article 50 immediately, which is basically what people had been uh, uh, told to expect if there was a, a vote. And, and therefore, the, the impact on the markets would be quite substantial. And there was a huge impact on the markets, exactly like the economist had said, a fall in the pound and a crash in, in shares. I remember which then about four yeah. in the morning. Exactly. Yeah. It's exactly what, what happened. What about, this, what about this phrase or this excuse, a victim of unprecedented times? Do you allow some leeway... I, 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 this purports to be a science, a social science. The word science is used of economics. I studied economics, I love it. Um, but they use these phrases, and then they come up with things like, this might happen. Uh, in the case of forecasting the results of Brexit, you would have thought they would have said, on the one hand, on the other hand, this was a, a, a universality, I mean, as, as Vicky says, a universality of a profession, saying, and I have to say, I can't believe they, it was un, unconnected with the fact that they wanted Let me ask you no something Brexit. bigger. If you take the forecasting out... If we never ask economists what will happen, is it still a useful tool? Does it still give us something? What the economists generally do is look at what's been happening in the past, so history. What does it tell us? 
Does it give us any indication of how people behave, operate, to inform policy in particular? I think that's the most important thing. So, so if you do... But you could say the same with politics, and well, clearly of course. it doesn't. Oh, well, 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 no, 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 no. There's, there's, no, no, you can run your models in a very, in a good way when things are pretty normal. And I think we actually have very good predicting records. What is much more difficult to do is if there is a shock. Very often it's a political shock. Uh, and then the economy, of course, goes into all sorts of, of, of sort of... Uh, uh, Spasms. Sort of spasms of sort, yes. This was the uh, dodgy dossier, no, no, and they no, ought no. to inquire into it. It really was. Well, right. classic case. We'll leave it there. Thank you both very much indeed. I've been getting away with